What is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Cherry Soy's version 3.8 and this particular build is based on Android 12 L on the Redmi Note 10 Pro of course. This is the 16th June 2022 build you can see from the build date. Right now let me show you the home screen this is how it looks like yes all over the UI it looks beautiful and everywhere I see it's fast and snappy no issues whatsoever that I have faced with the performance over here and let me tell you this ROM is F2FS so if you have no idea how to actually flash it let me tell you that you need to use the latest Orange Fox recovery unofficial one with that recovery you just format data then just reboot your recovery once then you can definitely flash this particular ROM without any problems. Of course all the specific links that I'm talking about will be present in the description. Yes, the flashing method is pretty similar to the other like video that I have made. The guide you will find in the description but definitely you have to use the newer Orange Fox recovery instead of the TWRP recovery which I showed in that video. So I hope you got that clearly. Right now let me show you the widgets are working perfectly fine if you're noticing the animations it's just buttery smooth experience everywhere even in the like power menu and stuff everywhere it's really smooth and here in the screen recorder menu as well it's really smooth experience overall it's flying through the whole UI no problems at all and everything is just fast and snappy still right now let me show you the google clock widget and stuff they are working fine also if i tap and hold you are getting the home screen the widgets and the world version size and in the widgets you can of course add the android 12 l kind of clock widgets over here there are a plethora of options and again as this is a pixel launcher in the home screen settings you will only find this suggestion disabling option and these kind of customizations but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen so that's why i have to use the double tap to sleep on the status bar if i want to lock the particular device and if you're gonna look at the about section let me show you that from the settings we have the android version as latest of android 12 l and right now if you keep tapping on it and make this clock to like 12 o'clock let me show you this is how it looks like it doesn't have the latest android 12 l kind of easter egg but that's how it is and here we have the cherry soya's version showing as 3.8 and the maintainer is of course niranjan and madhav and we have the security patch as latest of june 5th 2022 and here if you scroll down more you get the stock kernel as the phantom kernel 4.14 the snx status shows as enforcing and here again you can see the build date it's 14th june here it's mentioned in the system panel this is how it looks like we have the gesture settings right there this is the quick tap or the back tap and that is actually working perfectly fine if i do this right now as you can see it's set to recent that's why the back tap is working perfectly fine with the recents and we have the quick open camera then if you go back we have the system nav gestures in the settings we get the swipe to invoke assistant so that works perfectly fine if you're noticing and the left edge right edge customizations are there the pill length is there if we scroll down more we have the advanced gesture options so you can customize that thoroughly and you can set it to however you want to let me go back we have the back gesture haptic feedback and the animations and the full screen gestures but there is no thickness customization for the pill bar and that's how it is let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations as well and here we have the one handed mode too that is working perfectly fine and we have the swipe rig screenshot let me show you there is the shared edit delete and the google lens option also the scrolling kind of feature or capture mode feature works fine here let me go back we have a system updated so from here you can check for specific updates but right now the chat is 3.8 is the latest version and right now i have connected to this bluetooth headset that's why you are seeing the bluetooth battery status icon right there and even in the quick setting panel it appears like this so yeah the bluetooth devices are working perfectly fine and even on the status bar the icons or the quick setting panel icons looks beautiful over here i have been using the akeras one and yes it's cherry soy so it has customizations i'll show you those but first of all let me talk about the camera yes you are getting the miui camera or the anx camera right out of the box over here and if you're gonna see the portrait selfie mode this is how it looks like let me just take a quick one so i just took a selfie as you can see it's not bloody or something it's working perfectly fine no issues with the front camera or even portrait mode selfies and even the rear camera the portrait mode should be working fine as you are noticing and here if i switch to the super macro mode just notice yes super macro mode like photos are working perfectly fine here no issues even with the super macro mode and here you can also shoot pro videos over here if you're noticing and you can like set the shutter speed or the iso and stuff and here we have up to 4k 30 fps option for the pro video with the rear camera and with the front camera 1080p 30 fps videos are supported and of course there is the 64 megapixel mode and stuff but let me tell you 64 megapixel mode is still buggy and if you are shooting outdoor like 64 megapixel photos 
the camera might force close so that bug is still there also the slow motion bug is there other than that the documents mode the vlog mode everything should be working perfectly fine here no issues whatsoever with these kind of modes so yeah the amx camera we get or the miui camera we get by default here and that's just an amazing feature right now let me jump into the settings and here inside cherry settings you will get all the customizations of this rom if you don't like this part you can skip this particular part let's jump into the status bar section we have the double tap to sleep the traffic indicators the clock style and of course you can change it to left right or hidden and we have the clock and date customization from here you can customize this and we have the 4g icon instead of lte the volte icon and of course you can change the volte icon from like these many options there are plethora of options even for the volte icons and the vo wi-fi icons as well you can change from right here so this is just great if you're using vo wi-fi you can enable that for some reason and the roaming indicator the small mobile data icon combined signal icons and the colored icons you can enable or disable by the way these colored icons are like enabled by default i have disabled it and in the battery settings we have plethora of battery styles just notice the battery styles i have been using it with the r style a but you can also go with other landscape mode options just notice there are these kind of battery styles and they look really really different and beautiful i would say if you're someone who is gonna go with those and there is also this portrait ios style battery icon you can go with any of these and yes just notice how much different options are there but i definitely personally like this landscape art style a and this one is what i have been using and also there is the battery percentage settings and from here you can go with the next to the icon let me go back we have the status bar items from here you can of course customize the headset bluetooth etc kind of icons let me go back to the quick setting panel customization from here you can change the transparency of the quick setting panel but i haven't done that it requires a system restart if you change that and we have the data usage and stuff for the quick setting panel then over here we have the brightness slider you can have it on show always and the position on bottom and once you have that this is how it will look like and on the bottom if you're noticing the brightness panel and of course this is how it looks i'll show you the quick setting panel toggles later on And here we have the auto brightness icons and stuff and here we have the themes and in here we have the settings layout we have all these oxygen os 11 12 and the cherries cherries clean etc and we have the settings based layout and stuff and we have the use black theme option if you're using dark theme you can of course go with this one and the clear all button you can actually change right now it's not appearing but yes the clear all button for the notifications you can change even the background of the button you can change in the monitor theme engine we have all these chroma factor customization and stuff then we have the dark theme customization or enabling option and in here we have the headline and body fonts and these are the body fonts that you will get plethora of options for the body fonts are there and we have the icon packs i have been again using with the akira's one but you can go with the oxygen OS or rounded or stuff and we have the icon shapes changing option then we have the signal icon styles you can go with all these just notice how much icons and stuff are there in this particular rom it's just insane even in the wi-fi icons there are all these you can see the second option really good and we have the wavy zigzag inside bars etc let me go back from here we have the buttons customization and in here we have the system navigations again then if you scroll down more we have the invert layouts the volume steps and the volume rocker wake then the long press power button toggle torch etc let me go back to the animations here we have the animation style changing option then the duration and the interpolator and stuff and the screen of animation you can also change from right here then if you scroll down more we have the power menu customization here we have the advanced reboot options you can enable or disable it and then we have the notifications from here you can enable this in call vibration options and then we have the blink flashlight for incoming call the re ticker and we have the ambient edge lighting or pulsing notifications and the music ticker option the heads up you can enable or disable from right here and we have the make heads up let's annoying and the notification headers two step icon options are there not really sure if i showed you the lock screen customization but there are these double tap to sleep double tap to week on doors the always on display scheduling option also we get the lock screen charging info then the media cover art and the art filter then the pulse so navbar pulse lock screen pulse ambient pulse everything is there and you can customize it thoroughly that's just awesome let me go back to the misc settings here we have the charging animation the ignore windows secure flags and we have the game space so from here you can customize the game space and you can add any particular game that you would want to then we have the unlimited google photo storage unlock higher fps in games and the unlock higher quality streams 
or the Netflix Amazon Prime video kind of stuff for HD or like full HD options. Let me go back in the display settings. We have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness, the live display option and the flicker is there. So this is the DC dimming. Also there is the outdoor brightness sun mode and the color calibration, the RGB controls are there. And we have the picture adjustment for the hue, saturation, intensity and contrast. Let me go back in the lock screen. We have the face unlock kind of customization when swiping up on lock screen and stuff. Then if you scroll down more, we have the double line clock, the always show time and info option is there. That's not the always on display. Let me just enable that for the time being. You can also enable always on display for charging only. Then we have the wake screen for notifications. And here we have the dark theme, the font size, display size and the night side option. Then the colors are set to saturated right now because I have changed it. Of course, you can change this to RGB control and the smooth display option I have enabled it. This is the 120 hertz works perfectly fine. If you scroll down more, we have the prevent accidental wake up or this is the pocket detection. You can see and we have the allow window level blurs, the double add to wake and the wake up on plug. You can disable if you want to. But let me tell you one thing that with the accidental wake up or the pocket detection, I have seen sometimes even when I'm just holding the device normally, I cannot unlock the device. Once I press the about button, it shows like pocket mode detected and stuff. So that's why I would say I have been not like really liking this accidental wake up feature on this particular ROM that I must say because sometimes when I tried to wake up the device normally, it happened like once per day. It simply did not wake up the device or even pressing the power button did not work. So I had to force reboot the device by holding down the power button for 10 seconds or something and it actually force rebooted the device. That's when I could use the device. So yes, I would say avoid this prevent accidental wake up feature on this particular ROM. We have the display cutout options for some reason. You can of course change these and the full screen apps, you can force some particular apps to full screen if you want to. Jumping into the wallpapers and styles, we have this normal things like the app grid you can change from right here, the themed icons you can enable or disable, the dark theme you can enable from right here and the wallpaper colors you can change or you can go with the basic colors. By the way, the wallpaper I have been using is with the Wallpi app, I'll list it below in the description and here in the battery settings, this is how it looks like. Now here again, we have the battery usage, the battery saver, the adaptive preference. Also we get to see the battery temperature and stuff, right now it's 38 degrees. But let me tell you, I am kind of disappointed that I cannot really see the charging cycles of this particular device on any kind of latest ROMs. I don't know why, but even in this Cherry's OS, I was expecting the charging cycles, but that is simply not present even in this Cherry's OS, like Aku battery stats. And with this app, I have tested the battery thoroughly. And let me tell you, this is the best battery life that I've got on our FTFS ROM. And here I have got about nine and a half hours of screen on time. And that's really, really awesome. And nine and a half hours of screen on time is really good for a device which is having 5000 mAh battery with a 120 hertz AMOLED display I would say. And here just notice my battery health right now shows as 86%. So I would say the battery life of this ROM was really great. I haven't had any issues whatsoever. Also the 33 watt fast charging has been working perfectly fine. And one thing that I must say in this particular ROM that I have been noticing is the heating is much much less on this particular ROM. The device does not feel hot while using it normally and even in like heavy tasking and stuff I don't see any kind of major heating problems or heating issues on this particular ROM. The device actually stays really cool to the touch like whenever I'm touching this area the device actually stays really cool so that's a really plus point for this particular ROM that I have been like noticing. In the sound and vibration we have the media call ring etc volume controls the left volume panel and stuff you can enable or disable and we have the smart pulse and the volume panel timeout you can set it up to seven seconds and here we have the phone ringtone vibration pattern changing option if you scroll down more we also get the dolby atmos over here that's really good and the sound quality for the headphone jack and bluetooth and even with the like speakers the dual speakers i mean and the headphone jack as well it was really good even in the earpiece the call quality was great and here we have the dial pad tones, the screen locking sound, charging sound, charging vibration, etc. The screenshot sound you can disable. Also, there is a clear speaker option if you want to clear your muffled up speakers. And inside me enhancer or me sound enhancer, we have all these headphone presets. Of course, I have been using with the youth edition. And with that, the sound quality via the headphone jack was really sounding amazing. And here we have the sound presets. Also, you can change it to these many options. And here we have the smart scene switching option. And then there is a hi-fi audio option. Again, the sound quality of this ROM was amazing. I haven't had any issues. In the haptic feedback, you can of course customize these haptic feedback stuff. If you want to, it controls all over the UI haptic feedback. This is really awesome. And by the way, this is how the volume panel looks like over here. And this volume panel, I just love over here. Let me actually show you up close. This is how it looks like. If you tap on this particular settings, it will actually switch the devices just like this. 
Let me show you one more time. Just notice the animation, how smoothly it appears and even everywhere it shows the percentage and once you tap on this settings icon, just notice there is all this like changing option and actually shows the percentage of like how much you have changed. So that's really awesome. You can put the phone to vibrate or silent from right here of course, but this animations just looks beautiful. Also, this is how the stock dialer looks like and if I place a call, we have the call recording option and stuff and Vault calling is working super fine with the Geo SIM that I have over here. Right now, let's jump into the security and this is how the security settings looks like. If we go into the settings, we do have the quick unlock. This is what I love that we are getting the quick unlock at least. We have the face unlock and the fingerprints right here. We have changed it to when swiping up on lock screen and we have the redo face scanner and stuff. Then I've added of course two fingerprints and in here with the app lock, let me actually show you. You can go into the protected apps and then from here you can search for any particular app that you are willing to see. As you can see, you can lock any particular app just like this. And here also the Google Photos does appear and in other FTFS ROMs, I couldn't find Google Photos in the app lock. But here this option is present, so that's awesome. Also, there is the auto lock timeout. You can set it as you are liking and the collapse notification option is also there. And here, let me actually show you, this is how the app lock works. This is how the UI looks like. And if you tap the fingerprint scanner, that app actually unlocks really, really fast. Right now, let me just double tap on the status bar because the pixel launcher does not have double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen. So here, if I double tap to wake, so right now it's again working weirdly, but sometimes I've seen with the always on display, even the double tap to wake works fine. As you can see right now, it's working fine. So if I show you the fingerprint scanner speed, let me actually show you, as you can see, it's unlocking fine. Let me try one more time. Just notice how fast and snappy way it unlocks with the fingerprint scanner and it has unlocked if you're noticing. Let me swipe up and let me try one more time. So yes, the fingerprint scanner is really fast, no issues whatsoever. Also, it has this animations whenever you are pressing the power button. And right now, let me show you the face unlock speed. And if I swipe up, there is that black border. And as you can see, it has unlocked. Let me try one more time with the face unlock. And yep, the face unlock works perfectly fine. No issues whatsoever. The IR Blaster is working perfectly fine. Also, the safety net, if I run this test, the safety net passes right out of the box. So you can use banking apps without any worries. And even in this DRM Info app, L1 certification is still present. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems. And right now, let me just open a couple of apps so that I can show you the app open up speeds and stuff. And here in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. And in here we have the split top option. This is how you can go into it. And as you can see, split top is working fine. And you can scale the apps as you're liking and you can switch the apps just like this. And even if you go into the home screen, in the recents, both of the apps stays together. So yes, this Android 12 L kind of features are working perfectly fine over here. Also, all the other apps stays in memory. No issues whatsoever with app switching on this particular ROM, if you're noticing. And even in here in Chrome, if you're noticing the 120 FPS is working fine with the test UFO website. So yes, I would say overall performance was great and here are the end client Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build. So yes, overall experience while daily driving on this particular ROM was amazing. I haven't faced any issues as such and the like performance was great, the cameras are great and everywhere I just feel fast and snappy experience with this FTF storage and stuff. So yes, I would say this is one of the best Android 12 Ultra ROMs that you can try for your Redmi Note 10 Pro as of right now. So the Cherry Swiss 3.8, this was my experience with it. Let me in the comments what you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KDN Tech signing off for today and I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.